I've shown you clips the past two days from the US, the CNN panel laughing at Donald Trump and dismissing Trump supporters as boomer rubes, which means boomer bogans in our language. The CNN panel cracked themselves up about the dumb Trump voters who they reckon are ignorant on geography, on maths, on literacy. And I laughed at CNN because this sort of stuff, just like Hillary Clinton's deplorables comment, is wind in Donald Trump's sails. Last night I showed you how CNN host Don Lemon's uh, unconvincing explanation was made on television, and tonight I can show you even more. The Republican Party has already turned this episode into a devastating television commercial. Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. You can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> and so that's partly him playing to their base. Anyone who supported this president is, at best, uh, looking the other way on racism. You know, the, the, the credulous boomer rude demo that backs Donald Trump um, that, that wants to think that, that, that Donald Trump's a smart one and they're all y'all, y'all y'all elitist or them. Trump always loves the, the low information guy. You elitist with your geography and your maps. Issue of, of racism across the country because that, that's his base. Your math you're, and you're reading. <laughs> yeah, you're reading, you know, your geography. Sometimes these things just write themselves, don't they? And it's amazing how often people who think they're the smartest in the room say and do the silliest things. Let's bring in our digital editor, Jack, uh, editor now, Jack Houghton, who's been having a look at feedback during the week. That's an, uh, an amazing own goal by the CNN lefties, isn't it? I mean, what an extraordinary moment in the 2016 election when Hillary Clinton labelled half the country that votes Conservative a bag of deplorable, de deplorables. I mean, it's, it's that level of elitist smuggery which the media has been drilling into Donald Trump, and now he's actually using it against them by saying, well, they have nothing but contempt for you. It's, yeah. it's masterful. And what do their viewers make of it? Well, this is brilliant. I mean, this guy Adam Clark, he goes, so I guess he can thank the mass media and the do-nothing crats when he wins a second turn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Adam's on point. the money. Yeah. Well, th th you couldn't ask for anything better from the Democrats to, uh, to give you a bit of a campaign leg up. Uh, and Daniel Dawes says the left and the media literally handed him the 2020 election on a plate. Well, it's a bit early to say that, but they're certainly well, not hurting. Th there's merit to that as, as analysis. Um, maybe Daniel Dawes uh, is better qualified than Don Lemon in, in some, in some respects. Spot on. Because all, all they need to do is they need to get a candidate who's not ridiculously left-leaning and who will, who will appeal to the moderates and they need to be the party of the workers again. For some reason, something's happened and they've switched. The Republicans are now appealing to the farmers and the working class and the Democrats are sitting there calling people deplorable if they vote against them. Yeah, it's so silly. It's so self-defeating and it's amazing <laughs> that so many years on they don't see it. But we get a lot of that here in Australia where the left just denounced the mainstream. So let's have a look at some other stories, the feedback uh, you got this week uh, from our story about uh, that ridiculous comment from the business leader in Britain <laughs> saying that uh, it's sexist for us to talk about sport at work. Yeah, well, I mean, um, yeah, that's kind of incredible. I don't actually have the comments in front of me here. I've We've got, got uh, Richard uh, Watton here say, women have made so much progress in sport, one would think that women feel very much a part of the sports conversation. So th this is my argument. So th this woman, she outlines um, her proposition is that chatting about sport at work is sexist because it leads to laddish behaviour and uh, the, it's a slippery slope. That's the argument she makes. But she also makes reference that women, and she generalises and says, well, women aren't included because women don't like sport. I find that assertion to be inherently sexist. And, like... Let's think about in Australia, where our female athletes, the swimmers, we've got Ash Barty, we've got... Ash um, Barty uh, uh, fell over today, yeah, apparently. But yeah, that, was, I mean, that was upsetting. So admired. But you're right, it's but, such but a sexist what, comment to make. What do you think make? Ash Barty would think of the insistence that women don't like to talk about yeah, sport? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, how incredible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one from uh, Liz Murray says, Sign of the Times. <laughs> Don't think, toe the line, don't have an idea, don't enjoy yourself, worry, worry, worry about what you want to say before you say it. The world's gone, 
Bloody mad. Bloody mad. <laughs> Sorry, we've, we've edited the bloody there. Sorry, I've said it for you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> they tried to censor you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, another story that people have looked at is uh, the uh, stuff that we've looked at here with the, the, the Green Left being challenged uh, by the facts. Uh, I've looked at a number of issues this week and we've got um, this uh, feedback here, uh, some of the uh, insanity in America it's Art Krinderbring said this. Uh, in America, right, may not be as intense, but Trump just signed on to the Trillion Trees plan. What is the left doing besides wasting paper, making signs? This is about all the climate change protesting and the like, and don't know what they'll do without their smartphones. They haven't thought about that yet. Now, Art makes a really good point here because everybody is really, really keen to throw the coalition under the bus when Labor has axed its climate policy. They've failed to come to the table with a coherent policy. They didn't even bother costing their policy at the last election. You've got Conservative leaders like... Um, you've got the, the UK, the British Conservative Party. There, obviously, nuclear plays a big role in it as well, which is a big thing here. Nuclear and gas. Trump's building yeah. all these trees. Scott Morrison has signed on to 26 to 28% by 2030. Labor don't have a policy, yeah. yet they're supporting these protests which are calling for a 100% target by 2030 and then they're not adopting that. So they're, they're playing both sides there. I think Paul Murray's coined the term each way elbow, which seems to be <laughs> taking is. off. But the trouble is uh, when they distort the facts so badly, when they get so hysterical on mm. climate change, it's all fun for them now because the ABC and some of the other media and Twitter play it all up and say it's wonderful, but... Eventually, push comes to shove. You have to have an election campaign yeah. and some real <laughs> policies, and voters say, uh-uh, this stuff is nuts. And, and people will remember what you say. And it wasn't too long ago, we discussed this last week, Malcolm Turnbull was the Prime Minister, oh, and he yes. was denying a link between bushfires and climate change. And now, all of a sudden, he, he's, he's always been an advocate. There always was. And, in fact, if you make comments similar to the ones that he made in 2018, or well, you're a climate denier. Just very quickly, we might be able to get Tim Noble up, because this is a really... <laughs> Really pithy comment sums it up. He says, These petulant children are still sulking over the election loss, hence their desperation to latch onto any headline and portray it as some catastrophic failing of the government. Well said indeed, Tim Noble. That is all the time we've got for. Thanks so much for joining us again, Jack. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. Jack Houghton is our digital editor and uh, keeps pumping out that stuff on our Facebook page and via our, uh, our uh, website as well.